Imagine you could filter radioactive isotopes out of water just by growing algae in it. Let me show you how to use this algae like a sponge, sucking up radioactive substances from water. The dancing crystals in these algae I'm going to show you are the key to the story. Meet the mysterious yet beautiful microscopic algae Closterium. I bet most people will be thinking of little green balls when algae come to mind. While some algae are indeed little green balls, most algae have extremely wild and interesting shapes that at times put our human fantasy to shame. Clostarium is part of an algae family called Desmids, which is known for its stunning beauty. As you might have already noticed, Clostarium's most striking feature is its half-moon shape. Like the beautifully shaped species Clostarium monoliferum, shown here in the footage. The mystery of Clostarium starts with its name. Clostarium is derived from the Greek word for little spindle, Clostarium, the tool used to spin raw wool into threads since ancient times. Now I don't know if the shape of spindles changed significantly in the last 500 years, but to my eyes this algae doesn't look like a spindle at all. Although Clostarium comes in many variations and sizes, the species most suitable for the task of cleaning up radioactivity, in my opinion, is Clostarium acerosum. This Clostarium species is so big that it can be seen with the naked eye. It is somewhere between 400 to 600 micron in length, so about half a millimeter, which is massive considering it's a single cell. The preference for using big cells for the cleaning operation has the advantage to use less complicated filters to remove the cells after they soaked up the radioisotopes. What makes Clostarium really special are the two chambers containing crystals at the poles of each cell. The secret for cleaning up nuclear waste lies hidden here. Let's investigate its pointy ends. When you look closely you will notice a circular region with moving particles in it. These round-shaped voids are called vacuoles, which means empty spot. Empty in the sense of placeholder. Vacuoles can have many different functions in the world of microbes, among which the most important role is to collect water or waste products to prevent cells from exploding or getting poisoned. In Clostarium's case the vacuoles collect crystals instead. Each of these, let's call them crystal jacuzzis, binds heavy metal ions that are poisonous for the cell. But the crystals of Clostarium are so unique in the algae world that it is being debated whether the crystals have a different function as well. One proposed idea is for example orientation. The crystal chambers might act as a kind of gyro, determining the orientation of the cell. The wild crystal dance in the vacuoles is influenced by two distinct factors, one physical and one biological. The physical cause is Brownian motion, which is a random movement of microscopic particles caused by the collision with fast-moving molecules in the liquids they are in. And the biological cause of the crystal's movement is the constant stream of cellular plasma flowing around the vacuole with relatively high speeds, depositing the crystals in the center. That whole scene in the vacuole looks like a microscopic storm. The vacuoles are a bit like the eye of a tiny hurricane. Until the 1980s it was believed these crystals consisted mostly of calcium sulfate, the stuff plaster cast is made of. But it turns out the crystals in Clostarium are actually made of an insoluble barium strontium sulfate complex. Strontium you say? Bingo! It is indeed possible to use Clostarium's dancing crystals as a sponge to soak up radioactive strontium. Exposing Clostarium to water, contaminated by radioactive strontium isotopes, will trigger the precipitation reaction in the vacuoles. The crystals formed will soak up the radioactivity and store it safely in the cells. Radioactive strontium isotopes are released during nuclear fission and can easily contaminate water. Radioactive strontium is especially problematic for the human body because of accumulation and because of taking the place of calcium. I would say it's more than a nuisance if your bones and teeth start to become radioactive. Liquid nuclear waste is extremely difficult to dispose of without the risk of worsening or spreading the contamination. The question is how do we get the radioactive strontium isotopes out of the water? Enter Clostarium. 
this algae's ability to bind strontium in its dancing crystals has a huge potential for the decontamination of radioactive water. And as I already mentioned before, also the fact that Clostarium cells are rather big is a crucial factor for being able to filter off the cells after they soaked up the radioactivity from the water. So this is how I would imagine the practical application would look like. First, adjust the pH and temperature of the liquid nuclear waste you want to treat and add missing nutrients in case. Sounds complicated, but the only thing you really need is the pH buffer, because Clostarium doesn't need much luxury and grows almost anywhere as long as it has enough light. And temperature-wise, usually temperatures between 16 to 22 degrees centigrade are preferred. Secondly, wait until Clostarium grows and then use a filter to remove the cells from the liquid. The size of the cells makes it possible to use quite simple filters. Et voilà! The cells contain now most of the radioactive strontium in a precipitated, water-insoluble form and can be disposed of as solid nuclear waste. After you repeat this procedure several times, the radioactivity levels of the water should drop and you can release the purified water into the environment without harm. But as it seems, this attempt has never been made on a large scale. So it would be really interesting to see how this plays out on a large scale. Real-world testing would show how feasible this method is. I hope you found this interesting and I could inspire you to give it a shot. I'm pretty sure it might work. Anyhow, maybe you see algae with different eyes now, and I hope you discovered a special love for the wonderful algae Clostarium. Thank you for watching. Let's dig up some more dirt, and let's stay curious. Please listen carefully.